According to Babin and Harris, consumer behavior, also known as CB, is defined as the set of value-seeking activities that take place if people go about addressing and attempting to address real needs. The process itself involves multiple psychological events, including thinking, feeling, and behaving. The entire process is successful or creates value if the need that starts the process is satisfied. There are two perspectives that make up CB. They are one, actual human thoughts, feelings, and actions in, in the consumption experience, and two, knowing it is a field of study, more specifically human inquiry, accumulating a body of knowledge, which essentially means conducting research, about the human consumption experience. Think about a time when you saw a commercial on TV, and as a result, you concluded that you needed that product. I should note here that I also teach personal finance courses, which challenges, <laughs> it challenges you to think whether you actually need to spend money on a product or service, or if you simply want it. But let's follow the basic consumption process here. Now let's talk about the basic consumption process, which consists of six steps. Here, once a need is triggered, it develops into a desire or want to address the need. Then the consumer makes the decision to give something up for what he or she believes to be of greater value. This is called the exchange. The cost is what the consumer gave up, but the benefit is what was gained, just like an opportunity cost. The consumer then reacts in thoughts and feelings such as excitement or frustration. Ultimately, the consumer determines the value. Was it useful to meet your end goal? Did it serve as an end in itself? Or was it not worth your time? Now let's talk about how CB impacts other fields of study. For instance, psychology is the study of humans reacting to their environment. Many psychologists became the first consumer researchers. Thus, CB and marketing overlap more than any other discipline. Social psychology and cognitive psychology, both subdisciplines of psychology, are highly relevant to consumer behavior. Sociology focuses on the study of groups of people within a society. Consumers take value from sharing experiences to enjoy themselves or build social capital. Cognitive psychology comes into play every time a consumer evaluates a product, sees an advertisement, or reacts to product consumption because more information is processed. Neuroscience offers the potential for understanding CB by charting a consumer's psychological brain functions during the consumption process. Marketing, we, as we just identified, is the compilation of value-producing seller activities, facilitating exchanges between buyers and sellers, including products, price, place, and promotion. Anthropological consumer research focuses on symbolic meanings behind our possessions and also allows researchers to interpret relationships between consumers and what they purchase. Geography and medical sciences overlap with CB in that they draw from some of the same theories and or research approaches. Companies need to understand why people buy their products to recognize which the other current or future products represent competitive threats. Newness alone does not make something innovative. An innovation must produce value for consumers to be successful, just as not all small business owners are entrepreneurs. A new product on the market doesn't mean that it's innovative. Innovation must produce value and successful innovations reveal all or some of these characteristics specifically. Relative advantage, it makes things better than they were previously. Simplicity. Assuming all things are equal, a simpler innovation is better than a complex innovation. Observable. Things that are observable tend to get adopted faster. 
trialability, things that can be tried with little or no risk, get adopted faster. Consistency. Consumers are more likely to adopt things that are congruent with existing values and knowledge. Every company has a different way of doing things, especially marketing. There are three ways to market, undifferentiated marketing, differentiated marketing, and niche marketing. In undifferentiated marketing, the same product is offered to all customers. Mass merchandisers typify undifferentiated marketers in that they rely on selling a high volume to be successful. Undifferentiated marketers generally adopt a production orientation, wherein innovation is geared primarily toward making the production process as efficient and economical as possible. An example of a company that specializes, specializes in this is Walmart. Differentiated marketers serve multiple market segments, each with a unique product offering, like a beverage company may have a variety of products to appeal to various customer segments. For example, they may have an original brand product, a light version, maybe special flavoring, and a calorie-free product for those who are health conscious. Marketers can take differentiated marketing to the extreme with a practice known as one-to-one -one marketing, wherein a different product is offered for each individual customer. An example of one-to-one -one marketing is a custom home builder, as well as Spotify, which automates the one-to-one -one marketing by allowing customers to build their own playlists. Firms that specialize in serving one market segment with particularly unique demand characteristics practice niche marketing. Niche marketers may be a consumer-oriented option. However, some niche marketers are product-oriented and produce a product that has unique appeal within a segment. An example of niche marketing is the Bobby Grace Company, which specializes in only one product, the putter. Consumers make many important decisions that affect their professional careers, their quality of life, and their families. Some decisions are good and some are not. For example, decisions that lead to high levels of debt are usually not wise. The way consumers allocate their resources is an important aspect of CB. Consider these five statements when making purchasing decisions. Let's review some other CB terminology. Big data includes internal records of customer behavior like scanner purchase data, survey responses, and web traffic records, as well as data from social network interactions and GPS tracking. Researchers apply statistical tools to try to discover patterns in the data that will allow for better prediction. The data provided by some products may prove more valuable to some companies than the revenue generated by the product that sends the data. Companies are investing millions of dollars into Salesforce automation and machine learning system tools. If you are browsing and receive a pop-up asking if you'd like to, quote, chat with us, there's a good chance that there's not another human on the other end of that chat. Sharing economy is the global consumer trend towards rental, which is the temporary usage for hire, rather than ownership and or rather than doing the task yourself. Collaborative consumption is growing as evidenced by businesses such as Airbnb and Uber that offer rooms or rides for temporary use on a consumer to consumer basis. Hopefully you have a better understanding of consumer behavior. If you're interested in learning more about related managerial topics, you can find my books at any major retailer, including Amazon, or read Cengage's CB9. Thank you for your time. Be your best you and be a rockstar manager.